Hey everyone, so today I'm going to do a quick tutorial for you um, and using a new tool which was added in Lightwave 2019 and that is the Patterner Shader. Now if you're not sure what Patterner means, I've got I've done a quick Google search here and you can see that um, it says Patterner is um, usually sort of wear and tear, tarnishing, aging on on objects or materials, um, even a sheen produced by age, wear and tear, etc. So I thought I'd just point that out just in case you didn't know what it was. Um, if I go back to Lightwave, I'll show you where it is. So under the Tools tab in the the Surface Node Editor, um, you can see it's there, Patterner. And if I add this and just quickly plug in to see what we get in VPR, you can see here that we, we already get a nice sort of effect on the edges where you'd expect wear and tear and if I plug the dirt in you get a kind of accumulation or occlusion where the dirt may occur. If I up this up a little bit, so the radius setting just increases the area that is going to be affected and you can see there the where you get the sort of whiter effect is where um, there's more dirt accumulating. So my plan for this tutorial is just to quickly make a sort of an aged oxidized copper kind of shader and and I'll I'll take you through it relatively quickly but it's going to be quite a simple material really. So if I jump straight in, I'll unplug that. So I've done a quick search on Google for copper colours and a verdigris sort of green colour, which is the ageing of copper, the oxidisation. Um, and this is the copper colour, so if I quickly grab that, up metalness to 95, and you can immediately see we've got a really nice, really nice copper look on the dragon. It'd be nice to just leave it like that, really, but we're going to make it all old. Um, if I up this roughness setting to around 50% which is um, where I'm going with this particular material. Um, and now we're going to do the verdigris. So if I, again I've got another web page open which I can pick, uh, pick from the screen, that'll do. Um, so I want the roughness to be quite high 95, specular low, and metalness very low. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is, if you've not used this before, there's an old, uh, an old tool, material tool that we've had for for a while now, um, and this takes two inputs and then uses black and white um, masking effectively to flick between the two materials. So that's what we're going to be using the patina shader for. Now if I plug this in where I'd expect, so using the dirt, which is where I'd expect the, the more oxidization to occur, um, you should be able to see an effect. Now if I up the radius to around 100 mil, you do start to see an effect around around these edges here. It's just not particularly strong. Um, so, what I tend to do when using this shader is use a gradient uh, because it gives you ultimate control over where your darks and where your lights are going to occur um, and just generally a lot easier to control. So if I make both these linear, because we want to avoid any values getting below below zero, really, and that's a good way to do it. Now, one, I'll show you a couple of ways. One way to use uh, or to see what you're doing is to create a, a material which I'll just make it grey for now. It doesn't really matter. Make it not roughness, not specs. So that's and that and plug this in and then when I plug the pattern of shader from the gradient into the color you can see what you're going to get immediately without any um, spec or, or metallic ness getting in the way 
because as you can see, you can, as you up this, you you get things getting in your way. You can't see what you're doing. Um, and that's one way to see what you're getting as you're tweaking your gradient up and down and and things like that. You can see the changes. Um, but one way I prefer to work is by using the new custom buffers which were added in 2018. So if I if we go to the render options buffers, create a new custom buffer, and I'll call this patina just to make it obvious. And then when I come back over to the surface editor, I now have a patina little um, input where I can now plug this straight into and then come down here on my VPR buffers and I've got my very own patina buffer and this will just show you the output that you're getting from your patina shader. So if I go in here um, and tweak tweak these values a bit, so I want them occurring quite strongly on the, the occluded areas um, and nowhere else really. that's looking that will look all right I think uh, if I go back to the main oh yeah that looks lovely yeah that looks really nice already so we've got this sort of quite rough kind of copper metal around on the rest of the dragon and then that oxidized effect in the crevices which looks really cool um, now I'm going to go one step further with this. If I if I duplicate this copper shader again, and this time I want roughness to be maybe one, and I want metalness to be at 100, and maybe I'll boost the saturation of that a little bit as well. So if I want the edges of this copper where maybe it's been polished or knocked about a bit and rubbed, touched with the hands. Um, if I want to make those areas more sort of shiny and as you'd kind of expect in the real life, um, that's what I'm going to do now. So if I, I can probably use that same, the same pattern that I've got here. Um, and plug it straight in. So if I plug that into there, and we want to use this one now, so this is the combined uh, material that we've already made, and then plug that straight in there. So you should immediately see the edges of this this kind of object really starting to sing. The, where it's been highly polished and and things, but I'm gonna to make the effect a bit better. I think what I'm gonna do is copy these over, plug that into there. Oh, sorry, I should be using that as well. Um, yeah, and that's it. I think I'm done. It looks lovely already, and that was really quite simple. If I I'm going to plug this one into there and just quickly quickly tweak the effect. That's a little bit too strong, I think. I want it, I yeah, I'd, I'd like it more on the edges and less, less anywhere else, ideally. Um, yeah, really make it a really strong effect like that. Then if I come back to the, the main VPR view, you can really see that coming into effect on on these edges that might be subject to more polishing and, and things. And that looks really nice. I'll do a quick, just quickly um, up the samples um, on just the reflections and the area light, just to sharpen it up a little bit. Um, as we've got kind of close to what we want. And I'll just let this resolve for a little bit. But it, it shows 
it shows what you can do with a fairly straightforward surface really just just using two pattern shaders uh, and a few simple materials just using the principal shader. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.